Hello and welcome. This is my sourdough for home cooks, sourdough for beginners. If you're having trouble with your sourdough, we're gonna talk about baking sourdough at home, keeping up with your starter, and different tricks that I found that's really helped me on my sourdough journey. I wanna preface this by saying there's so many different ways to do this. If this isn't how exactly you've seen it done before, that's okay because I'm really happy with this result, so this works for me. I've kind of learned this mostly through trial and error. My first couple loaves definitely weren't great, so if you don't get this right away, don't be too discouraged. You'll definitely learn over time, but this is how I found it works for me, so let's get into it. The most important part, your sourdough starter. I bought my sourdough starter on Etsy. It was a dehydrated sourdough starter, so it kind of gave me like a head start on getting my starter ready to bake with. Most people, like myself, work throughout the week. So if you're not going to be baking bread every day, I would definitely recommend keeping your starter in the refrigerator. I'll use my starter every weekend and then I'll feed it, put it back in the fridge till the next weekend. If you feed your starter too often, then your bread might not taste sour like sourdough and you might not get as good of a rise. I noticed a big difference in my sourdough when I started feeding it less. So the day that I'm going to make sourdough, I'll get my starter out of the fridge in the morning and let it sit at room temperature for a couple hours just to bring it back to life a little bit because it sits kind of dormant when it's in the fridge all week. So to start, you definitely need a scale. This was like $10 on Amazon. It doesn't have to be a nice expensive one, but you definitely need a scale to weigh this out. I'm making a couple loaves today and I found it easier when I'm making multiple loaves just to do them all in separate bowls. I think for a beginner that's much easier because then you don't have to worry about sectioning out a big ball of dough later on. I'm going to weigh out my starter, water, flour, and salt. If you can, definitely use filtered water and use water at room temperature for this step. 65 grams of starter. So starters in there, I'm gonna zero it. I'm gonna do 350 grams of room temperature water. 351, 352, that's okay. And before adding in the flour, just mix this together. Get these pieces of starter all dissolved into the water. Just like that. Next is our flour. You wanna definitely use bread flour for this instead of all-purpose flour. I use a high protein 14% bread flour. Zero it one more time. I'll add 15 grams of kosher salt. I'm just gonna take my hand and basically squish all of this together. You don't have to knead this necessarily. Just gonna get all of the ingredients incorporated into a really sticky dough. So this is all mixed. I do like to take a minute and keep working it. You can keep squeezing it or pick it up and kind of throw it down just to get the gluten working. This is what you want. It doesn't need to be in a smooth ball. This is perfect. So I finished making the dough for the four loaves that I'm making today. So I'm gonna cover them with plastic wrap and set a timer for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, that's when we're gonna do our first fold. While that's resting, we're gonna refeed the starter. It's really important before you start your starter in the jar to know how much your jar weighs by itself. So on the lid of my starter, I wrote 325 grams. That's how much this glass jar weighs with no lid on it. Turn on my scale and weigh it. So this weighs 655 grams right now. For my normal ratio when I feed my starter, I do 200 grams of starter, 200 grams of water, 200 grams of flour. So I need this total to be 525 grams right now. So I'm going to discard the extra so that this says 525. Don't put this right in the trash can because if you need to add more starter back, if you take too much out, you can do that. You can also use the discard to make other things. You can use it to give starter to somebody else. 
So I took too much out, so I'm gonna add some back. Okay, so I have my starter again, room temperature water. Perfect. I find it's easier to mix the flour in when the starter and the water are mixed together. All right, and the flour, I buy mine in bulk, it's much cheaper. So this is all mixed together. You can see it's kind of just gloopy, kind of like the dough, a little bit wetter than the dough, but just a really sticky mixture. So I'm gonna put my lid on. This is gonna go in the fridge just like this. Like I said, I leave it in there all week. If you wanted to make bread sooner than a week away, you definitely could just get it out of the refrigerator, let it come to room temperature, and you know that your starter is ready to use for baking when it's nice and bubbly. And if you take out a little bit, put it in a glass of water and it floats. Clean up a little bit because you will make a mess doing this, like 100%. It's just very messy. Our first rest time is up, so we'll start our folds. Doing these folds is what will make your bread nice and hearty and chewy. We'll basically pinch the edge of it, pull it up, fold it down. Turn it a little bit, pull it up, and put it down. Put the plastic wrap back on and let this rest another 30 minutes. It's been 30 minutes, we'll do another fold. You'll feel it start to get more elastic each time. Now I'll fold this every hour for about four hours or so. To be honest, you don't have to be really strict on every hour exactly. Our dough has been rising, so now it's time to shape the dough and put them in the refrigerator overnight. So when I shape mine, I like to have a cup of water off to the side. And I have this little shaker with bread flour in it, but you could also just dust your board with flour. Further away from me, towards the back of my board, I'm sprinkling some flour. I'll kind of try and help it out, but I don't want to deflate it. I'm gonna take each side, stretch it out, bring it across, from the bottom up, and the top one back. Flip it over, get the extra flour. This is where I just wet my hand with some water and wet the surface closest to me. Put this seam side down on the board. So I'm gonna cup the dough I use my ring and pinky fingers, and I'm gonna bring it to the side, tuck my fingers under, and pull it back to me. To the side, back towards me. I like to do this on a wet surface and not on the flour because it gives you a little bit of tension and it'll give you a nice smooth dough ball. I have these bread proofing baskets but before I had these, I would just line a bowl with a damp towel that works just as well. So I have some rice flour. I just sprinkle in here, pick up the dough and put it in there with the smooth side down. And I'm just gonna let this rest for a minute while I shape my other loaves.
I would let the dough rest for like five, 10 minutes before you move on to this step. Otherwise, the dough is just not gonna stay closed. Just one on each side. We're gonna cross over, kind of sealing the bottom. It doesn't always stay perfectly and that's okay. But just one over the other and I bring the ends in. All right, now get some clean dish towels, put them over the loaves of bread, and these are gonna go in the fridge overnight. I do at least 12 hours, but that is it for day one. So it's the next morning, it's come time to bake the bread, and I have a couple tips with that as well. For baking the bread, if you are a home baker and you don't have a commercial oven, you're gonna to wanna to make your bread in a Dutch oven because it'll get you the best rise, the best crust, the best texture on your bread. So this is what I would consider to be a normal standard size Dutch oven. I think it's five or six quarts, I'm not exactly sure. I was baking my bread in this one. I found that my bread was really spreading out. It wasn't rising up as much as I wanted it to. Once I started using this smaller three quart Dutch oven, I noticed a huge difference in my rise. So if you're having trouble with your bread rising, I would definitely recommend trying this smaller size. Instead of the bread going out, it has no choice but to go up because it can't spread out anymore. And I get a really nice rise using this. I'm gonna put it back in the oven until we're ready to bake the bread. As you could probably tell, you're gonna preheat your Dutch oven before you bake your bread. I turn my oven to 425 the day I'm ready to bake it, put the Dutch oven in there, and let it preheat with the Dutch oven in there for one hour. So now it's time to score the bread and bake it. So I just got this out of the fridge. This was one of the doughs from yesterday. Get a piece of parchment paper. You'll also need some cornmeal. I'm using this lame today. It just has a little blade on the end here. The whole point is you just want whatever you're using to be very sharp. I'm going to make my design on this piece of parchment paper and I just save it and use it every time. So I'm putting cornmeal on that and I'm putting cornmeal on the dough itself. So I'm taking it out and place it on to the parchment. I just give it a little bit of a shape up, but you don't have to do this. So this is optional, but I like to use rice flour for this. So I just sprinkle some on. Rice flour works well for this as opposed to bread flour or all-purpose flour because rice flour doesn't get that sticky gluten development. So we can make a design in this and nothing will get gummy or sticky and it bakes up really nicely, doesn't clump or anything like that. There's so many different designs out there that you can use for your bread. But really the only thing that you have to have when you're scoring your bread is a large cut, can be on the side, can be down the middle, could crisscross it, but the steam when this bakes will need somewhere to escape. So you have to have at least one cut through it. So whatever design you wanna do, but when I'm doing a design, I like to take a butter knife and just kind of in the flour, map out what I'm going to do. So I just did diagonal slits the whole way down in the four quadrants. And then for this design, I'm just going to make two deep cuts. So one this way, and one this way. So right after you score it, you wanna get it into the Dutch oven so that it can bake. This can be the tricky part, especially with the parchment. You're gonna make a mess, it's not a big deal. At this point, do not forget that this pan is hot. The lid is also hot. Burning yourself on this one time will teach you very quickly not to do that again. So take the lid off with an oven mitt on, and don't forget that it's hot when you go to put it back. Into the Dutch oven, again, some cornmeal, just sprinkle it in. It's smoking a little bit and that's okay. That means our Dutch oven is nice and hot and ready for our bread. And I just get it onto my hand and drop it in. Cover this up. The bread is kind of, in a way, steaming itself within the Dutch oven. And that's what's gonna give you the nice rise and those big air bubbles. I've messed with my cooking times and what I found to work for my specific dough and my oven is I bake it for 23 minutes with the lid on. 
I'll take the lid off and bake it for another 20 to 25 minutes until you get a really nice brown crust on it. Okay, the bread is done. Look at how gorgeous this is. Making this for a friend today, so I'm glad it turned out extra pretty. I'm just gonna flip it out and put it on a cooling rack, and I'll just let this sit at room temperature for a bit. If you cut it too early, all the steam escapes, and I found that that can affect the crust. Try and be as patient as possible. I know it's really hard because it smells so good. So I ran a couple errands and my bread is cool. I made a couple loaves for friends, but I always make sure that I make some for myself because you can't smell this and not want to eat it. Let's cut into this. Look at that. My favorite way to eat this is with a really good quality butter, European butter for sure. And a little bit of this natural honey here. I make this every week and it just doesn't, it just doesn't get old. If you guys have any questions, please ask. I'm definitely here to help. I hope that this turns out well for you. If you guys like this, please like and subscribe and I will see you next time.